Hello everyone, my name is Kodamore and welcome to episode number 22 of creating a space shooter with Godot. Let's create another enemy that can actually shoot. It's going to be the same thing as our fast enemy which just moves down the screen, except I'm going to have it move down the screen a little slower and it'll obviously be shooting at certain intervals. So we need to create another scene that inherits from our base enemy scene. We'll go to scene, new inherited scene. We're going to extend, or essentially base it off of, our enemy scene. So we'll click that and click open. And we'll give this new scene a name of, I'm going to call it a slow shooter enemy. So I've renamed the root node, save it as slow shooter.tscene in the enemy folder. All right, first things first, my slow shooter is going to have a different texture. So I'm going to click on the sprite and I'm going to drag in a new texture. I'm going to go to my textures folder and drag my enemy ship image into it like so. I also want my enemy ship to be a bit smaller than it really is, so I'm going to go to the transform of the sprite, and I'm going to scale it to be 75% of its size. There we go. Next is our collision shape, and I'm going to use a rectangle shape for this ship, and I'm simply going to kind of stretch that out to be a majority of the width of the ship, and we'll make it a bit bigger and move it up a bit. Whoops, we'll move the collision shape up a bit to match up like so. And I think that's good enough for my liking. If you want to create a more specific collision shape, of course you can, but that covers a majority of the ship. I think I'll be fine with that. And next, I'll take my visibility notifier and I'll simply shrink it a bit, just so that it covers the entirety of the ship. All right, there we go. Next, I'm gonna click my sh slow shooter node here, and I'm gonna disconnect the script by clicking that button, and I'm gonna add a new script We'll call that slowshooter.gd and create it. And remember, this script is going to extend our base enemy script. And now if you take a look, the slow shooter now has that vertical speed and health we were talking about. I'm going to make this guy go slower than the fast enemy, so I'll give him a speed of probably like, I don't know, we'll try 65. And I'll give him a larger health of something like 40. There we go. Let's see how this looks. We'll go to our gameplay scene. And I will go to my enemy folder, and I'll drag in my slow shooter just somewhere into the scene so we can see it in action. I'll put it over here to the side of the screen, and we'll see. Yep, this guy's moving faster, this guy's moving slower now. And we can still shoot him and hopefully destroy him. Yep, there we go. So, the next step here is to get this guy shooting. I'm actually going to put the code to shoot in the base enemy class here or the base enemy scene, because enemy, because every enemy should be able to define you know, those shooting points, kind of like our player has these firing positions that mark where the bullets come out of. We're going to have every enemy have that, but it's going to be up to the enemy itself to determine how and when it should fire their bullets. So in my base enemy scene, I'm going to create a new node 2D, and just like our player, this is going to be firing positions, or fire positions, I think. I'll name it the same thing as the player, firing positions, just so that we don't get too confused. So now every enemy can specify certain firing positions by adding additional nodes under it, just like our player here, to, to determine where the guns should go. So in my slow shooter here, we see this node firing positions. It just appeared because we, we are inheriting from our enemy scene. And I'm going to add a new node 2D as a child of that firing positions, and we'll move it to where the bullets should be coming out of. So I'm going to have this guy coming right out of this part of the ship, and I'll just name this left gun. And I'm going to duplicate this by pressing Control D. I'm going to name this one right gun, and we'll move it over to where the right gun should be shooting out of, right about there for me. There we go. Now we're going to put the code to actually shoot from these positions in the enemy class here, the enemy scene. And we're just going to mimic the player. We'll go into the enemy base script. And first, we'll check out our player script and see what it does to fire. Remember, we made this function. And remember, in the process function of the player script, we, we basically iterate through all the firing positions children, and we spawn a bullet at that position. So we're going to copy that for loop from our player script, just the for loop part. And we'll go into our enemy base class. And we'll create a function to do this for us. So we'll create a function called fire. And that will simply be that for loop. Paste it in, and I'll fix up the formatting a little bit. Now, of course, there's some issues here. We need this firing positions, or essentially 
this node right here from our enemy. So at the top of the enemy script, we'll do an on ready variable called firing positions, and we'll set that equal to dollar sign firing positions. We'll get that node right there. Next is the bullets. We need this PL bullet, the preloaded instance of our bullet. So we'll go to my player, and at the top, I created that PL bullet that preloads the bullet scene. And I'm just going to copy that and put it in the base enemy script. Here's our preloaded bullet. And now all the errors disappear. So this is all we need to have a fire function for every enemy to be able to use. Now whenever an enemy wants to shoot, it just has to call its own fire function. It'll iterate through everything under the fire positions node and spawn a bullet at that node's position. So if we go to our slow shooter and we go to the slow shooter script, I'm going to create a process function. And for now, I'll just go ahead and fire every single process frame just to see what we get. So if we run our game here, we will see, whoa, something absolutely crazy just happened. And that's because of the bullet. If you take a look at our bullet scene, so if we go to my bullet folder and we open up the bullet scene, you'll notice there's a few issues. And that main issue being, if you go into the bullet script, first of all, it's subtracting from the bullet's position, meaning the bullet is always moving upward. Obviously, we want our enemies to shoot downward. And our bullet is damaging anything that's in the damageable group. So it's damaging our own enemy, which is why our enemy just disappeared out of nowhere, because it was firing and damaging itself. So we either need to modify our bullet to support both shooting up and down and a different visual icon here, or we can just create a new bullet scene for enemy bullets. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to create an inherited scene from this bullet here. Because the bullets are going to look the exact same, and they're all going to have a collision shape and a visibility notifier. So we'll go to my scene menu, and I'll create a new inherited scene. We'll inherit it from my bullet scene, and I'm going to name this enemy bullet instead. And I'm going to save this new scene in my bullet folder as enemy bullet. First things first, I want the enemy bullet to look different. So I'm actually going to click on the sprite and drag in a new texture. I have this laser green image, which is going to look like that. I'll just verify that my collision shape fits. Yep. And the visibility notifier covers the whole thing. Yep, and we are going to click the enemy bullet and detach the script from it. There we go. Now there's no script, and we're going to attach a new script to the enemy bullet called enemybullet.gd. Now we are not going to extend our bullet script here, because it's going to have completely different functionality. It's going to be going the opposite way, and it's going to be damaging the player and not any other enemy. So we're going to keep it as extending area 2D, and I am going to take the bullet script, and I'm just going to copy the code that's in it and paste it in my enemy bullet and we'll go through line by line and see what we have to change. We will need a different bullet effect. We're going to need an effect that looks green and stuff, but for now we'll leave it as the red one. That's just a visual effect. We have our speed variable for how fast the bullet will travel. We'll keep that the same. In physics process, we're going to be moving the bullets downward. So we'll add to the Y position. If the bullet leaves the screen, we need to remove it so that code stays the exact same. And in fact, you'll notice that our signal connection stayed. If we click the little signal icon, you'll notice that our enemy bullet's visibility notifier is connected to this function here. So Godot already kind of put that together for us. Then, if an area enters this bullet's area, instead of checking if it's in the damageable group, we need to check if the area was the player. We only want these enemy bullets to damage the player. So we'll say if area is player, if it's an instance of our player scene, then we'll spawn our bullet effect. Again, we're going to have to change that by changing the scene that we load, but that'll come later. We'll damage the player because our, because our player has a damage function, and then we'll free the bullet. We'll remove the bullet. Okay, great. All right, so now that we have our enemy bullet, we'll go into our enemy script, and our preloaded bullet here, we're going to change that from our bullet scene to our enemy bullet scene. And let's see if things change now. If we go here, Yep, you can see that our enemy is now appropriately shooting a large stream of bullets down from itself. Obviously that's not what we want, but that's just because in our slow shooter enemy right here, we're firing every single process function call. Anyways, next step is to get that enemy bullet effect working, because if you look click carefully when the bullet hits the player, there's this kind of red uh, little effect that's appearing and not green. So we have to make a new bullet effect for that. So if we go to the bullet folder, we have our bullet effect 
scene here, which is just this little icon. And if you look at the script attached to it, it simply just attaches itself to this timer that removes it after a certain amount of time. So we're going to create a new inherited scene, and we are going to inherit from the bullet effect scene, like so. We're going to name it enemy bullet effect, and I'll save it as a new scene as enemy bullet effect. There we go. And the only thing that's going to change is the image. I'm simply going to drag in my green shot image to the sprite, like so and everything is the same. So now in the enemy bullet, if we go to its script, rather than loading the normal bullet effect for this preloaded effect, we'll load our enemy bullet effect. That way when the bullet hits something, it'll spawn that green effect instead. So when we run the game and we can start getting hit, you can kind of see those green effects are appearing instead. All right, so that is enemy bullets. Now we're only missing one key thing with our slow shooter enemy, and that's the fact that he is shooting way too fast. So we'll create an export variable called fire rate. That'll be, that'll be how many seconds between shots. So we'll just say for now, one second between every shot. And in order to actually fire at this rate, we're gonna need a timer. So in my slow shooter scene, I'm gonna add a new node. I'm gonna add a timer node, and I'm gonna call this the fire timer. That just sounds awesome. That should be like, not a band, almost a band, but not quite a band name. Anyways, fire timer. We are going to set that to one shot because we only want it to run once and not automatically restart. There we go. Now into the slow shooter script, we only want to fire if that fire timer is not running. So first we have to access this fire timer node. So we'll create an on rarity variable called fire timer. Set that equal to dollar sign fire timer. And in the process function, we'll say if fire timer dot is stopped, then yes, we can fire. And right after we fire, we have to start the timer. We have to delay for this amount of time. That way, the next time the process function is called, the, the fire timer is running, so it will not fire until the time has elapsed. So we'll do fire timer dot start for whatever we set our fire rate to be. So now every one second, we should be calling the fire function and firing bullets from our slow shooter. If we run the game, yep, that's working much, much better now. We actually have those bullets shooting down every one second from that shooter. I'm actually gonna make the slow shooter here fire really, really slow, like every three seconds. So we can just change that right in the editor like so. And that's it for this episode, everyone. We've got our slow shooter, our normal fast enemy that just moves, and our meteor on screen here. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode.